Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. Guess what? She's back. You know who she is. I love days when Jackie Bryan comes to teach me wonderful things that I can share with you. And if you have never heard an episode with Jackie Bryan, she is Comedy Cures, Beating Cancer Dailies, favorite certified nutrition specialist, RN, whole health educator, certified health coach, and just such a dear, dear friend with a wealth of knowledge and information. So welcome back to Beating Cancer Daily, Jackie. Hi, Saren. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to talk about fiber with you today. You know, I'm going to save my joke to the end because you know that I love to tell you a silly joke after you've taught me so much. So I can't wait to hear all about fiber. Oh, great. All right. Well, I'm going to get started then. Uh, You know, I think there's many people that think a lot about, am I getting enough protein? Am I getting enough carbohydrates? Am I eating too much sugar? But it's very rare that they sit down and think, am I eating enough fiber? And, and I'm here to say that fiber is really one ingredient that should be a part of everybody's meal, uh, every snack. We, we are so fortunate that fiber is naturally present in many of the healthy whole foods that we eat things like vegetables and legumes and fruits and nuts. Uh, You know, and I'm going to guess that just talking about the word fiber, people know it's important. Um, In fact, there's a lot of experts that observe that people in other cultures that have given up their traditional healthy diets, and if they adopt more of a Western style of eating, uh, sort of like the standard American diet or SAD. So Jackie, this is so sad that Americans are aligned with the SAD diet. I want to be aligned with a Mediterranean diet or something a lot more sexy than a SAD diet. Can you tell me more? Yeah, we we actually have sort of given it in, in my industry, that nickname of SAD, the standard American diet, because it is a diet that is high in processed foods. It's very low in fiber. It's high in sugar. And we're just seeing lots of health issues from it. So calling it sad is really sort of the perfect nickname for it uh, because a lot of the people that are consuming the sad diet are are devoid of many of the nutrients that keep them healthy and disease free. Um, In fact, there's, there's some research that demonstrates that fiber rich foods help our body in numerous ways. Uh, The inclusion of fiber in your diet can actually help with blood sugar levels. It can reduce the risk of um, heart disease, stroke, uh, high blood pressure or hypertension, as we call it, diabetes, obesity, breast cancer, colon cancer, gut issues. Uh, Some of the gut issues might be things like reflux, um, duodenal ulcers, irritable bowel. Uh, You know, I mean, listen to this list of things that I'm saying. I mean, this is, this is a hugely important part of our diet. If fiber plays such a role in all of those things and including helping us manage our weight, we need to put a spotlight on it and really pay attention. I want a happy diet, Jackie. I want to get lots of fiber and have a happy diet. No more sad diet for you. We are going for the happy one. I love it. Fiber also plays a role in the enterohepatic circulation. And you're probably like, what is that? <laughs> That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. Say enterohepatic Three times, 10 times, however many times fast in a row, it's not easy. Uh, The entero is actually Latin for relating to your intestines or your gut. And then hepatic 
some some people may know what hepatic is because they might have heard hepatitis or um, something related to the liver, but hepatic is actually Latin for our liver. And and fiber plays a big role in clearing out all the fat soluble waste from our body. And we're not going to spend a ton of time on that today. But just know that in addition to all those other amazing things, you know, preventing heart disease and and balancing blood sugar and weight, it can also help get the trash out of your body, which is pretty significant. I think the one of the biggest questions I get from people is, can you just tell me exactly what fiber is, Jackie? Like, what does fiber do? Are you curious about that, Saren? I was actually going to ask you, what is fiber and how do I get more of it in my diet? Yeah, so just like the bones that make up the skeletons of, of you and I and even animals, fiber is actually the skeleton of plants. And it's found in plants, which is why consuming a plant-based diet is so important. Uh, fiber is a, is a type of carbohydrate that your body cannot digest. Now, we, we know of some carbohydrates that we can digest and it gets converted into glucose in our body and gives us energy. That's not what fiber is. Fiber is a carb that your body cannot digest. And it's important not only for digestive health, but all those other things we talked about, weight management and um, prevention of certain types of cancer. Uh, So it's definitely an important thing that we want to pay attention to. What does fiber do? Uh, Well, one of the things that fiber does is that it's responsible for moving foods quickly through our digestive tract and helps it function properly. Uh, It's important for us to drink adequate liquid when we have fiber in our diet. And some of you that may be taking a fiber powder of some sort, you can read on the label, it says must drink with a lot of water. But when you consume fiber, and I'm not recommending that you take a fiber powder, but I'm just suggesting that any type of fiber that's in your diet, you do need fluid to consume it because it really helps move things along. Fiber actually works by drawing fluids into or from the body into add bulk to the stool, right? So that's how our our poop gets fluffy. (laughs) And I think we've had, you know, we had our uh, podcast on poop, what's your poop telling you? Uh, But I think it's really interesting to think about how fiber actually has an important role in making that that poop float, right? Well, I just have to say, Jackie, that that episode is so popular and I love it. I've listened to it several times. If you have not heard the poop episode, (laughs) sounds so funny. If you have not heard the poop episode, you really have to go back and search poop in our podcast history and set aside some time to listen to it. It's a little bit longer than our traditional episodes, but you will never poop the same after (laughs) you. (laughs) You're going to become a poop detective. So it would be great to hear that episode. Yes. And you know what? This this, uh, podcast actually goes nicely with that one because we we all want to have floating poops. We don't want to have the, the sinkers, right? Because that's an indication of, of lower fiber levels. Uh, fiber, you know, where, where do we get high fiber foods? I'm going to, in a little bit, I'm going to give you an idea of where some of the, the best sources of fiber are, how much you need to have, but really keep in mind that it comes from fruits, vegetables, and grains. It's part of their, the cellular wall of these particular foods. And that a lot of the research that we see is that it can significantly balance blood sugar. And people might be wondering, you know, how does it do that? And what happens is when you eat something that is, say you have a apple and you, or you're just having apple juice with no fiber in it. And if you drink it, that's going to immediately spike your blood sugar. If you eat an apple, as opposed to drinking the juice, the apple is actually going to have some fiber in it. And the fiber is going to slow things down a little bit. It's going to make it that your blood sugar doesn't spike quite as much. So people that have blood sugar dysregulation or people that are diabetic, are it's always recommended that they have fiber in their diet so that it can help balance the blood sugar and help the way that they are actually absorbing glucose in their, in their diet. 
if if somebody has an inadequate amount of fiber, what are some of the the health issues that can occur? Well, you, you're probably guessing constipation, right? So you may not move your bowels the same way. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome is another one, diverticulitis, heart disease, certain cancer, you know, many of the things we talked about that you can prevent and even elevated cholesterol is a, is a sign of inadequate fiber. And we'll talk a little bit more about that connection. There's actually two types of fiber. Do you know what the two types of fiber are, Saren? Only because I heard you say it on a prior podcast, soluble and insoluble. Oh, you've got it. So let's, let's... <laughs> I'm so let's... happy I recalled that. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to your podcasting episodes, Jackie. I learned from everyone. I'm so excited that you remembered. So let's talk about the two types and, and where you can get these uh, wonderful two types of fiber. So insoluble fiber is is the first one we'll talk about. And, and insoluble fiber is has the job to provide bulk to your intestines. It bulks up the stool. Remember, it draws the water in, um, makes the stool, you know, a little puffier and bigger um, in the in the bowel so that it can evacuate out of your body. It also helps alleviate constipation and helps with balancing pH in your intestines. Insoluble fiber does not dissolve in water. And it actually, I, I think this is kind of cool. It acts like a broom uh, facilitating movement through the digestive tract. And insoluble fiber We've talked um, in our Health Builder series on gut health, we talked about microbiome and microbiome is bacteria that's in our gut and bacteria in our gut actually helps orchestrate a lot of the way our body functions, our immune system, the way our food is absorbed. It's important to note that insoluble fiber does not ferment with bacteria in the colon, which basically means it doesn't provide the best source of food for the uh, bacteria in the colon, um, but it is shown to prevent diverticulosis and hemorrhoids, um, and it can help sweep carcinogens and uh, toxins and things like that out of your body. So it's pretty important. Examples of insoluble fiber are things like nuts and whole grains, vegetables, uh, vegetables like zucchini and cauliflower, broccoli, carrots, avocado, leafy greens. The other type of fiber is soluble fiber, and it's, it is similar to insoluble fiber, but it creates a gel in your system and it binds with fatty acids. And studies show that it actually can prolong stomach emptying to allow for better absorption of nutrients. And what that means is it kind of hangs around in your stomach a little bit longer because it takes longer for us to digest. And this is one of the reasons that when I work with my athletes, college and high school athletes, um, I advise them not to have a fatty meal too close to competition because that delays stomach emptying, which can really transfer some of the energy that should be going to their extremities while they're running or swimming or doing whatever their sport requires their body to do. Um, it, it just makes it that it's focused on breaking down the fat in their gut. So it's one of the reasons we, we don't want people having a fatty meal too close to competition, but that's getting me a little off track. <laughs> but, but we know you're an athlete, Jackie, and we know that that's important to you. It is. It is. I, I am an athlete and I, I think a lot about how I eat prior to any of my, uh, matches or competition that I that I participate in. Unlike insoluble fiber, soluble fiber actually dissolves in water and it acts like a sponge. And this is really cool. Like when you eat it, it creates this sort of sticky bolus that helps not only lower your blood sugar, your blood glucose, um, but it can help with your cholesterol. And it works with the liver to escort excess hormones like estrogen and testosterone out of the body. Remember that enterohepatic circulation that we talked about? This is actually where that kind of comes into play. Soluble fiber can help lower cholesterol by uh, binding to it in the intestinal tract and actually escorting it out of the body. It is, I think it's pretty amazing. It's one of the reasons that you saw, you know, ads for, Cheerios or oatmeal helping lower cholesterol. This is the reason why, because it actually binds to 
the uh, cholesterol, the, the, the soluble fiber and, and helps eliminate it from the body so it can't get reabsorbed. But people have to not fall for the trap because a lot of cereals that claim that are so high in sugar. So you think that you're increasing your fiber and you're doing this good thing and then you're just b- pounding your body with sugar. So you've got to really read that label. Yes, I, I I agree completely. So being an informed consumer is key, right? You, you, you don't want to trust that the manufacturers have your best interest at hand. Some do, but not all. And and like Saren said, there's a lot of sugar that can be added to many of these food sources. But there the examples, some of the examples of soluble fiber are things like oats or oat bran, beans and lentils chia and flax seeds, nuts and seeds, barley, some citrus fruit, and even apples, strawberries, blueberries, pears, and sweet potatoes. Apples are kind of cool because apples have both insoluble and soluble fiber in them. And so it's important for you to understand where you're getting your sources of fiber, right? And so you can, there's, I'm going to provide you with some ideas for how you can get some good information uh, just from going on to, to Google and, and finding some resources. So we'll, we'll talk more about that. Hey, Jackie, I think people have to listen to our smoothie episode now, because if they have not listened to the smoothie episode, there are some great ideas on how to incorporate those seeds and those fruits and vegetables into smoothies. Right. And one of the big things we talked about in that podcast was to get nine to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables, which is not always easy. And one of the reasons that recommendation that those servings are so high is because of the fiber. I mean, not only do you get the health benefits of antioxidants, which are just an amazing part of many of these foods, but you're also going to get the fiber. So that there's a win-win that can happen by consuming some of those fo- those types of foods. The Some of the, the perks of fiber are not only does it promote regularity, right? Because it moves that food through the intestines, but it's been shown to increase stool frequency. And Saren, do you know how many times we should be pooping a day? I was told after each meal. Is that true? Anywhere from one to three times a day is a good a good thing. If you think about it, because when we move our bowels and and we have a a bowel movement, that's excreting a lot of those toxins. We really don't want them sitting in our intestinal tract for a long period of time because things start to get absorbed back into our system and that's not healthy. And that's where, you know, if you talk to people that they only move their bowels a couple times a week, they feel pretty toxic, right? So that this is definitely something that people should pay attention to, to, to find ways to evacuate uh, their body in a way that will eliminate some of those toxins. Other other perks of fiber are weight loss. Uh, and one of the reasons is because um, the, the food with fiber moves a little bit slowly through the digestive system and it helps a person feel more satisfied. So it helps with satiety. They feel fuller longer. And this is a wonderful strategy for people that are trying to lose weight because losing weight is really hard. You know, when you cut back calories, it's something that um, is challenging. And those people that I do work with in my practice for weight management, um, we make fiber a big part of their nutrition plan. It can improve heart health by escorting the cholesterol out of your system, as we talked about earlier. And it's also been shown to lower blood pressure, which is key. Uh, when blood pressure is high and out of control, it, it creates damage, um, little nicks and cuts in the linings of the vessels that can be a perfect place for plaque to accumulate and lead to heart disease. And that's not something that we want to have happen. Uh, one of the strategies that I advise people to do to get more fiber in their diet is to combine every meal and snack with a protein, fat, and fiber uh, because it helps slow the absorption of that blood sugar, which is really important um, as we were talking about earlier. And I think, you know, the bottom line is everybody's digestion can be improved with fiber. It's it's really essential for long-term health and it really can prevent illness. And I guess, you know, probably the biggest question is, okay, I'm sold. (laughs) How much fiber should I have? 
you know, according to the American Heart Association, adults should consume anywhere from 25 to 38 grams of fiber a day. And I'm going to give you examples of what that actually looks like in just a second, because it's one thing to say, oh, I've got to get 25 grams in at a minimum. It's another to to figure out where is those going to come from. And the American Heart Association also recommends having at least 14 grams of fiber for every thousand calories that you consume. And so that may require a little bit of math for some of us, but it's a good rule of thumb uh, to help you get to that 30. I think 25 is a little on the light light side. I'd like to see people upwards of 30. I think that's a really good range. Um, but getting in lots of variety of those fruits and vegetables can really be beneficial. The American Heart Association also recommends three or more ounces of whole grain products. And if if you're somebody that enjoys whole grain, that that works for you. But if not, there are other ways that you can get um, the sources of fiber that you need from the nuts and the seeds. And, and let's just talk a little bit about where some of these sources of fiber can come from and just use examples. And so, Sarah, do you have a guess on how many grams of fiber are in uh, one cup of avocado? Take a guess. I would say 10. That's a Perfect guess. Wow. Did I pull that off? <laughs> you pulled that off. It was actually 10.1. We I are going to Vegas. We are going to Vegas. I'm going to hang out with you. And not everybody would eat a whole cup of avocado. I mean, I usually do a quarter of a cup of avocado, but there's 10 grams in a whole cup. Asian pears are right up there at 9.9 grams. And and remember that a lot of these foods not are just going to, they're not going to just give you the fiber. They're going to give you vitamin C, vitamin K. They might give you some omega-3 or omega-6 fatty acids. I mean, these are really important uh, nutrients for good health. Uh, Raspberries per cup. You want to guess that? Let's see how you're going to do. Now the pressure's on. I could lose all the money that I just won in Vegas on the avocado. (laughs) A cup. So let's say 12.5 on the raspberries, but I'm starting to think lower. Yes. So one cup of raspberries is eight grams of fiber. Blackberries, one cup of blackberries is is 7.6 grams of fiber. So you can see how these actually start to add up throughout the day. And one of the strategies I share with people is to pair a fruit or a vegetable with every meal and snack. And that's a really helpful way to assure that you get enough fiber in your day. Now, one of the questions that you were curious about prior to our podcast today was about oats. You still want to learn about oats? I do because I try to eat a cup of oats every single morning or a half a cup of oats every single morning, either as cooked whole oats or overnight oats. Right. So it's a great question. And what it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier, being an informed consumer. For example, there are some oat oats that you can purchase that per a cup cooked, it's 8.2 grams, which is fantastic. But if you get the instant oats, some of those instant oats might be lower. So it's really important for us to read those labels to be really informed as to what we're putting in our body. They also have so much sugar because they have dried apples in them, but they're sugar coated. You have to be so careful with those prepared packages. Yes, yes. And being being aware of what the secret names of sugar are, that might be a really good podcast is identifying where sugar is hidden. And that's a that's a really helpful one in terms of understanding how to read labels. I am so excited because every time we have a discussion, you think of another topic, which means you're coming back to do the secret hidden sugar episode. We could do this for years. This is, this is fun. <laughs> flax, flax seeds. Do you like flax? I, I'm obsessed with flax, chia, hemp. I ha- I put them all in and on everything. Salads, smoothies, cereal, everything. Right. So flax seeds are 2.8 grams per tablespoon of fiber. And chia seeds are 
10.6 grams per an ounce. So I think you can start to conclude that there are many different ways that you can get in different sources of fiber. And you just have to put on your little detective hat and figure out where these uh, sources of fiber can come from, keeping in mind the soluble and the insoluble and what the health benefits are to you. Remembering that your uh, recommendation from the American Heart Association is anywhere from 25 to 38 grams of fiber per day. I did want to talk about just a couple things for people to consider as they increase their fiber in their diet. Are you curious about that, Saren? Yes, I'm going to predict that you're going to tell us to increase our fluid intake. Absolutely. We definitely need to drink more water or liquids to help move that fiber through our system. Um, the other thing for us to consider is that increasing fiber too quickly can cause gas, bloating, and stomach pain, and none of us want that. So I suggest that people start increasing their dietary fiber slowly and increase it gradually and keep a food journal, as I said earlier, because I think that can be really helpful to connect what you're eating to how you're feeling. If you start feeling bloated uh, and maybe having some gas and, and stomach pain, you can connect it directly to the fiber. It doesn't mean that you don't increase your fiber. It just means you might need to slow down the process a little bit. I do recommend that people get the majority of their fiber from fruits and vegetables and whole grain rather than supplements. I like to see people get it in whole foods because not only are they getting the fiber, they're getting all the wonderful nutrients that go along with that. This is amazing, Jackie. I can't wait to start making a list of the way that I'm getting soluble and insoluble fiber into my diet. Now I am super curious. I'm glad this is, I mean, it's something that I became particularly interested in, you know, after being diagnosed with cancer myself 20 years ago, uh, because I knew it was a very important part of health. And so many things in my body, the way it functioned, uh, you know, everything from moving my bowels more efficient to feeling more satisfied after meals, all of those things got better when I was paying more attention to the amount of fiber I was getting in my diet. I think of how I ate when I was diagnosed with cancer and how I eat now and also being 24 years out since I'm diagnosed, 30 years out since I was misdiagnosed and just how much better I eat now, how much less processed foods I eat, how much more conscious I am about what I'm putting into my system. But I have to tell you, I'm a little bit annoying because every time we sit down at a meal, I say to everybody, eat the rainbow, everybody. Jackie said we have to eat the rainbow. <laughs> oh, they must love me. <laughs> it's so funny. So I want to tell you my joke before we conclude. Can I tell oh, you my joke? Oh, I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> Jackie doesn't always get my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> if you've listened to any other episodes of Beating Cancer Daily, you know that you laugh even if you don't understand the joke. Did you hear about the documentary based on fiber? No. It's very moving. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> so cute. I love that. That's so funny. Somebody actually wrote in to Beating Cancer Daily and they said, your jokes are so corny, Saren. But I just love that you find them so humorous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's so cute. So I want to thank you, Jackie, for coming on today. And I can't wait for you guys to go back and hear all the episodes that I've done with Jackie on smoothies, on brain health, on bone health, on what other ones have we done? Lemons. Oh, lemons, magnesium. We have antioxidants. Antioxidant. We have so many. So please check them out. If you would love for Jackie to cover a topic, go to comedycures.org and hit the record button and let us know or hit the contact button and write to us. 
if you would love to follow Jackie and learn much more about her practice and how she can help you be healthier, just write to us at comedycures.org and we will send you her full contact signature. Jackie, thank you again. Thank you so much, Sarah. And it's such a blast hanging out with you. Have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. If you love today's episode, then tell the world. Why? Because Beating Cancer Daily and our membership circle are both a listener and donor supported experience. So the more people you tell and the more people that join us, the more robust and interesting programs our nonprofit, the Comedy Cures Foundation, can bring to you throughout the year. I really want you to go to comedycures.org. And of course, I always want you to make a donation. It's tax deductible to the extent allowed by law. But what's super exciting is not only can you laugh and explore the comedy there, you can look at our membership levels and find the one that's great for you. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, gift one to a chemo brother or sister or to a caregiver that you just want to help them improve the quality of their day. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.